DiscerningHearts.com presents Building a Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Essert. Monsignor Essert is a priest of the Diocese of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He has served as a retreat director and confessor to St. Mother Teresa. He continues to offer direction and retreats for the Sisters of the Missionaries of Charity. Monsignor Essert encountered St. Padre Pio, who became a spiritual father to him. He has lived in areas around the world, serving in the pontifical missions, a Catholic organization established by St. John Paul II to bring the good news to the world, especially the poor. He continues to serve as a retreat leader and director to bishops, priests, sisters, and seminarians, and other religious leaders. Building the Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. What's on your heart today, Monsignor? You know, this wonderful gift of counsel. You know, I was praying and asking God to help me, just as I was about to share with you. The Holy Spirit has all these gifts that are going to come, and it's going to be next Sunday that we have Pentecost, this wonderful feast of the birthday of the Church, this feast in which all of the culmination of these days of Lent, and then Easter, the risen Lord, and then the 40 days of our Lord appearing to his apostles, this time of prayer that we're in, waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. When we think of God the Father, we attribute to him creation. God made the world. He was the creator. Jesus was the Redeemer. After mankind fell, Jesus came, and he suffered, and he died, and he rose, and he ascended into heaven. He redeemed all of mankind. But this age in which we're living is the age of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's work now to sanctify, to guide, and to bring every human soul to heaven. The application of the redemption and salvation won by Jesus is to be given to every human being, going into the whole world, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and behold, I will be with you all days, even to the end of time. And so, From the time when Jesus ascended into heaven at Pentecost, and that in the year 33, until now, this is the age of the Holy Spirit. And many times he really is only the left and right shoulder for us who bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and then of the Son, and then the left and right shoulder of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is completely, totally God, equal to God, one with God, co-eternal with God. And so he is the Spirit of God who has come on the whole world. There's a magnificent image. Um, A friend of mine, an artist, has the wings of this this huge dove encircling the whole earth, the Holy Spirit coming upon the entire human race. Right now, Chris, I would just love to have the image of the gentle dove as he came upon Jesus when he came up out of the Jordan, that he came upon Jesus in the form of a dove. So, Jesus says to us, I want you to be as gentle as a dove. And then he came in fire, and he came in a strong wind. And when we hear of tornadoes, winds, and the power, and he came in fire. So the the saying that Jesus said, I want you, my disciples, to be as gentle as a dove, and as cunning as a snake, we have to have that combination. That is the gift 
of counsel. Many of us followers of Jesus, when we want to follow him, have to have this characteristic of gentleness and this deep awareness of prudence. That's really what it is. Not only do you know knowledge, understanding. Did you ever know something? You know it and you understand it. But how to communicate it, how to teach it, that's the gift of counsel. A mother, she wants to talk to her daughter about her sexuality. She loves this child. She has all this wisdom. But when, how, and where to approach this child? When is it the right time? How do you present it to her? Each one is different. And so the mother, in communicating this knowledge, this understanding, has and needs to pray for the gift of counsel. Exactly when do you say what you know and how you know it? A priest, there are certain things that you say, you can say in the confessional to this soul, they would be understood in this circumstance, in this setting. Pray for the gift of counsel. Sometimes even by brother priests in the confessional, you will have something that you want to guide this soul by. You know, if I tell them, it's just going to make them, they're going to be committing sins that are going to be formal sins, and they're not going to be able to change. What guides me? And yes, I know the truth. I understand it. And this person has to know, but how? When and where do I enlighten this particular soul at this particular matter? The confessional is an enormous place to apply the gift of prudence, the gift of counsel, the delicacy. My dad used to say to me, he would come sometimes and hear my sermons. And sometimes, you know, he, he was my greatest critic in the sermons that I'd give. He'd come and he would really love to hear my talks. And one time he said to me, John, it's not what you say, it's what's learned. How important is it to say this if it's not going to really communicate? So that it's not that you lack the courage, that's another gift. But the prudence of having those who are going to listen to be open to hear the message that you're preaching. The gift of counsel, and our Lord said, don't worry about what you say and, and when, you're, when you're brought before the Sanhedrin. And he said at that time, the Holy Spirit will give you this light. Pray for the gift of counsel. It is so important. If you're a coach uh, uh, of a football team, if you're a coach and they're teaching young people, this is a tremendous gift to have. It's a, a prudential communicator. How do you get across the essential teachings of what you want to get across to this athlete, to this person? so as to more effectively communicate your gift as a teacher. Do you actually, within your heart, before you step before a classroom, pray for this gift? It's a powerful and wonderful gift. Sometimes I meet people who are exhausted. A parent who wants to be generous and respond to the demands of their children, uh, a parent who wants to be patient and listen 
to each child and their needs and cares. But do you have, with regard to this gift of counsel, God wants us to live our lives, and he wants us to be generous, but he also wants us to be able to know when to say no. He wants us to be able to know and distinguish. So when you find yourself, and this is a, an advice of claim your unique presence in your community. And I believe the essential gift here that's being applied is the gift of counsel, the prudence to be want to be generous, but to know when, how, and where to apply that generosity and love. Your unique presence, this is taken from Henry Nouwen's Inner Heart of My Faith. Your unique presence in your community is the way God wants you to be present to others. Different people have different ways of being present. You have to know and claim your way. Now, I believe this virtue that's being applied here is counsel. That is why discernment is so important. Once you have an inner knowledge of your true vocation, you have a point of orientation that will help you decide what to do and what to let go of, what to say and what to remain silent about, when to go out and when to stay at home, who to be with and who to avoid. This gift is so powerful that that inner awareness, this is what this is. It's the gift of counsel. It's that voice in you that tells you, don't do this, do this, go here, don't go there. When you get exhausted, frustrated, overwhelmed, and run down, your body is saying that you are doing things that are none of your business. God does not require of us what is beyond your ability, what leads you away from God, or what makes you depressed or sad. God wants you to live for others and to live that presence well. Doing so might include suffering, fatigue, and even at times tremendous physical or emotional pain. But none of this must ever pull you away from God and away from your deepest self, that inner self. That's where God resides. The whole purpose of the gift of counsel is to do the will of God. Many things that are asked of us by others are that which God does not want us to do. Because people ask of us doesn't necessarily mean that that's what God wants me to do. How to say in the inner self and decide no to that. How to avoid certain situations. All of us, all baptized, confirmed, Christians have this gift of counsel. It's deep within ourselves. It's different than knowledge. It's different than understanding. It's that prudential movement that is within us that's going to help us 
to know what it is and how it is that we should do it. I think it's it's so important to guide us in our generosity, to prevent us from being self-centered and selfish, because we can avoid situations just for our own comfort, and we can get into things because maybe our nature is to to just be more involved and busy more than we really want to be until we're so exhausted. And so that, I believe, today is what I would like to present, especially to all those of you who have roles of guiding others. It's a, it's a very magnificent gift to use for yourself in, in your own activity and how you present yourself in your own community, but also how you're able to guide and direct others that we need this great gift of counsel. We'll return to Building the Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Nessif in just a moment. O Holy Spirit, Divine Consoler, I adore you as my true God. I offer you my whole heart, and I give you heartfelt thanks for all the benefits you have bestowed upon the world. You are the author of all supernatural gifts, and enriched the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with all favors. I ask you to visit me by your grace and your love, and grant me the favor that I now earnestly seek. O Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, come into our hearts. Heavenly Father, you have called me to be a member of the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. I ask you to give me these gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, that I may understand the follies of this world understanding that I may grasp more fully the meaning of my existence and the purpose of all things in the world, counsel that I may always choose the proper way, fortitude that I may remain faithful to you under the pressure of temptation, piety that I may revere you in all I do, think, or say, fear of the Lord, that should the motive of love fail me, I may quickly be awakened to the eternal consequences of my deeds. Visit me by your grace and your love, and grant me the favor I so earnestly seek in this novena. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Amen. We now return to Building the Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Nessa. I never thought of counsel as that gift that aids discernment, but I guess that makes complete sense. I wonder if we're even aware that we should be praying for that. It's not natural prudence. It's supernatural prudence. That's what the gift of counsel is. Nor is it psychology. You know, it's not uh, you know, like counseling, you know, like airing your thoughts and coming to an awareness of, of what you're thinking. But it actually is, it's, it's that which the Holy Spirit gives me to guide me in performing the will of God. And in it, the, all of us are called to love one another. But the gift of counsel is that which helps us to communicate in, in our words, in our services, in our relationships with one another in a loving and Christ-like way. Again, to go back to discernment, I think we we sometimes, while the Ignatian exercises are such a blessing and those the, the rules for Ignatian discernment is so helpful, I think sometimes we, we think we can utilize those as a tool that somehow under our own auspices, our own control as opposed to they're a part in the council is what guides us. Does that make sense? What I, what I think, I don't want to, you know, lessen the, uh, how important it is to, to learn the rules of discernment, 
Right. But the gift of the Holy Spirit that is given to us by our baptism, confirmation. And if, if you, for instance, have the, the sacrament of marriage, you will receive in that an increase of the gift of counsel for your children, for instance. And there are many things. I'm just dealing with this mother and father right now. This baby, you know, is the sleep deprivation that will come. How do you apply counsel to this situation in their marriage? And, and so it, they're more and more sharing the caring for the baby and discussing it as to who gets up and takes care of the baby. And the, the mother, she's taken time off of work, so she's not, she, this baby now has this tremendous demands and needs. That, I believe, is very much between the husband and wife and between this child, the, the gift of counsel that's guiding them and helping them in this stressful time of sleep deprivation that is demanded. Their generosity is needed, but so also is their prudence and their counsel in knowing how to, uh, to share it between both the husband and the wife as they uh, go about their daily lives. Any final thoughts, Monsignor? I was just thinking that since we're in this time waiting for Pentecost, that so many of us maybe have neglected to pray for this particular gift, the, the gift of counsel, which is so important, and the awareness. I, I have found... If you do not have this gift, like, for instance, some of us have been born with the wonderful gift of a gentle way about you. Have you noticed that with some of your children and members of your family? They, they, they're like born with this gentleness, which our Lord says you should have. You must have the gentleness of the dove which we usually associate with the Holy Spirit. But you also, and this is of the Spirit, you must have the cunning of the snake. That awareness, that inner awareness of cunning, of how to get what you're getting going for, and, and that will be the will of God, how to avoid unnecessary harm, so that there has to be a combination so that this is the what to pray for, to ask God, you fathers, mothers, uh, children, you know, when you go to school, uh, when, you're, when you're taking classes, when you have uh, a body of knowledge and a course to take, a new one, Pray for this gift. God wants to give it to you. You young people who are deciding on a college, a university, when to leave home. Maybe you should stay at home a couple of years. When you could go away. Those who are in service. What is this magnificent gift that we leave so untapped? And it's a gift. You have it. It's not so much that you're going to have to go out and get something. These gifts of knowledge, of understanding, and of counsel are in you. They are given to you right from the time you have been baptized, right from the time you had been confirmed. And as you call upon the Holy Spirit, go into your inner self. So many of us leave untapped these tremendous sources and resources that lie within us. There's a beautiful prayer, and it's, uh, it's in a song that I'm going to ask to call upon the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit 
will be poured into your heart and you will cry, Abba, Father. Particularly if you feel so uncertain, at times confused, at times unable to make up your mind, and not knowing how to approach certain things, or or feel ungifted and vulnerable because you do not have this inner awareness of anticipatory things that you're going to have to face. And fear is in your heart. Cry out to God for this gift. Abba, Abba, Father, you are the potter, we are the clay, the work of your hand. Mold me, mold me and fashion me into the image of Jesus, your Son, of Jesus, your Son. Father, Father, give us this gift of counsel. Send us the paraclete. Stir up in our hearts in a special way this gift which will give us this prudence, this cunning that is your spirit, your spirit to protect us, your spirit to guide us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Monsignor. You're welcome. You've been listening to Building the Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. To hear and or to download this program or to browse hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible, to support our efforts. But most of all, we pray that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com.